Hello everyone, thanks for stopping in. Today we're going to be talking about Math 100, Section 2.6, and this deals with ratios and problems involving ratios. So first let's talk about what a ratio is. A ratio is a fractional comparison between two different values with different units. And I have some space over here for some examples. So first, miles per hour is a ratio. It's comparing your miles per hour traveled, right? It's a ratio of miles to hours. Another common one is unit price which compares the price to the size of the thing you are buying. So ratios are fractional comparisons. Proportions are statements of equality between two ratios. Proportions are when you have two ratios that need to be kept equal to each other. That is what a proportion is. Cross multiplication is a technique for solving a proportion problem. And let's look at what cross multiplication says. If I have A over B is equal to C over D, then I want to cross multiply. And what we do is, we'll use our blue pen, we multiply diagonally. So I will do A times D, and that should be equal to B times C. I multiply diagonally to solve proportion problems. I have two fractions that are equal, and I multiply diagonally. Now, before we get to proportion problems, let's just take a look at some example ratios. And our first example says, at the local tops, there are three jars of peanut butter. The first one contains 18 ounces and costs 349. Okay, so we got one jar. All right, the second contains 28 ounces and costs 499. All right, and the third contains 40 ounces and costs 679. Which jar is the best buy? Well, if I want to know which is the best buy, I need to think about the unit price, right? Which jar gives me the best ratio of dollars to size for the jar? I need to think about unit price. Which unit price is always dollars over size. Unit price is always dollars over size. So let's take a look here. Let's look at the first jar's unit price. The first contains 18 ounces and costs 349. So I'm going to put 349 in the top and uh, 18 ounces in the bottom because this will give me the unit price for my first jar. Well, let's check. 3.49 divided by 18 equals, and I get, let's see, 0 0.193, and if I want to round this 8, that would round up to 9, right? This 8 here, because there's an 8 after it, this 8 tells me to bump that 8 up to a 9. And the units are going to be dollars over ounces. Dollars per ounce. It costs about 19 cents for every 1 ounce of peanut butter for this first jar, right? Now, we're going to do the same thing for our other two jars. 4.99 over 28 ounces. That's my second jar, right? $4.99 and it has 28 ounces. Well, once again, I'm going to take my calculator. $4.99 divided by 28 ounces gives me, and once again, we're going to have to round 0 0.1782 dollars per ounce. So the second jar costs around... 17, a little more than 17, it's closer to 18, right? About 18 cents per ounce. So this one's actually a little bit cheaper, right? So between these two, this is the cheaper choice. But we got to check the last jar, right? 
and the last jar is 679 over 40 ounces, right? And notice I put the units on it to help me remember. 679 over 40 ounces. Well, 6.79 divided by 40 gives me 0 0.16975. So 0 0.1698 dollars per ounce. Notice I rounded each one to four decimal places. I'm just rounding so I have enough places to compare. Now, which of these three unit prices is the lowest? This one's the lowest right here, right? This is the smallest unit price. So that means the third jar is the best buy. Third jar is the best buy. I get the most peanut butter for the price I am paying with the third jar. I compare the unit prices. I always do dollars over size to compare unit price, right? So if I'm buying peanut butter and I'm trying to be as frugal as possible, I should buy the larger jar, right? Because, or the largest jar here, because it has the best unit price. Largest isn't always the best unit price though, so it's always important to double check. Always divide them out to double check. Now, let's check some cross multiplication. So here we have 5 ninths equals x over 63. And I have fraction equals fraction, which means I can cross multiply. That is what cross multiplication is for. Well, I'm going to get 5 times 63, which will be 315, I believe. 5 times 63 is indeed 315. Equals 9 times x. Well, 9 times x is 9x, right? Well, I'm going to divide both sides by 9 now because I want to get x alone, right? x equals, let's see, 315 divided by 9 gives me 35. So I get x is equal to 35. So I cross multiplied to solve that problem. Now in our second example, actually our third, but our second example of cross multiplication, m minus 1 over 3 equals m plus 4 over 8. And I am going to cross multiply again, but I need to be careful. Notice this m minus 1 is a group of itself, right? I need to keep it together. And I want to multiply that by 8. Well, I'll put 8 times m minus 1 should equal, and same with the m plus 4. I need to make sure I keep the m plus 4 in parentheses, and I'm multiplying that one by 3. Make sure if part of your fraction is grouped together, you keep those groups together, right? Keep the groups, respect the groups. We'll distribute the 8, and we'll be distributing the 3, right? we got to distribute, that's what we need to do first. Well, I get 8m minus 8 equals 3m plus 12. Well now, I need to move stuff around. Let's see, I'll do minus 3m here, right? I got to bring the m's over, which means I need to do minus 3m here. And we can also do at the same time, right? That'll cancel this out. I can also add 8 to both sides, right? Because that's the other thing I have to move to the other side, right? I'm getting all my m's on the left and all my constants on the right. So the 8's will cancel. I'll be left with 8m minus 3m. Well, that's 5m. And then equals, let's see, 12 plus 8 is 20. Let's see, divide by 5, divide by 5, right? Will give me m equals 20 over 5 is 4. So I get m equals 4 for my third example. Notice I cross multiplied and then I was in familiar territory. I was solving a linear equation once I cross multiplied, right? This is an equation like we've seen already. The only new step is the cross multiplication. Well, let's take a look at a, uh, a word problem. Let's take a look at a uh, proportion problem. And let's see how it looks. Now, it says after Leanne pumped five gallons of gasoline, the display on the pump read $15.50. Okay, so I know that five gallons of gas relates to 1550 in cash. When finished pumping the gas, the display read 
44 95 how many gallons did she pump well I have a known ratio I know that five gallons relates to 1550 so I'm gonna write that and personally I always like to put money on the top because that's how unit price has to be so I always like to try and follow that pattern right 1550 and let's see I had 5.0 gallons it's important you write the units feel free to abbreviate right dollar sign gal for gallons equals now on the other side I'm going to put the same units but I'm gonna leave the values blank for now and I need to think which one did I know in my unknown ratio I'm trying to find how many gallons relate to how many dollars right gallons to dollars so I do not know the gallons but I know the dollars so I set up my ratio using the known comparison first the known ratio first then I set it equal to the unknown ratio and I make sure I match the units towards the end of this note section we will have the steps specifically laid out for us but that is the important thing to keep in mind you need to match dollars to dollars and gallons to gallons you got to match the units because now we are ready to cross multiply we have a proportion problem we can cross multiply well 1550 times X will give me 15.50 X right and that'll be equal to let's see we got to do 5.0 times 4495 which gives me 224.75 now to get X alone I need to divide right I'll divide by 1550 I'll divide by 1550 which leave me with X equals let's see 224.75 divided by 15.50 gives me 14.5 and now I already know the units on the answer because X is gallons so I'll put gallons because it already I already had the units set up right I already knew what units I was looking for how many gallons did she pump 14 and a half gallons right so make sure you're setting up the known ratio first and make sure you remember which units are where always label your units now we're going to talk about percentages percentages are specific types of ratios percentages are ratios compared to a value out of 100 right 100 percent is the total percentage for any value right that's the maximum percentage that's actually what the cent part means cent think century 100 years in a century think cents dollars right there's a hundred cents in a dollar the per part miles per gallon right miles per hour per is telling you it's a ratio it's per 100 ratio in 100 right per and cent if you break the word apart it tells you exactly what it's trying to say now usually we think of this as a comparison of and I like to use the words the amount out of the whole equals the percentage out of 100 that is how I generally like to write my percent problems some people also might write is over of equals percent over 100 and this is using the grammar of the problem to think about it as well and we'll talk about both we'll talk about using the amount out of the whole or is over of as our uh, thought process so let's look at this first it says what is 15 percent of 600 so first I notice there's a 15 percent so I automatically know I'm working with percentages so I'm gonna put 15 over 100 right away because the percent always goes here now I need to ask myself what goes over here one of them is gonna be X and one of them is gonna be 600 well I'm asking what is 15% of 600 600 is my whole I am trying to break down so 600 will go in the bottom 
and x will go in the top. Now, if you think about it as is over of, the is part is the what, the of part is the 600, right? Is over of, amount over whole. Now, I can cross multiply, gives me 100x equals 15 times 600, 15 times 600 is 9,000. So, to get x alone, I have to divide by 100, right? 9,000 divided by 100 gives me 90. So 90 is 15% of 600. Notice I reread the question to make sure I knew what I was doing. 90 is 15% of 600. That makes sense, right? Always reread the question. Now, let's look at the second one. 32% of what number is 64? Well, the first thing I notice is that our, this number is going to be 100 always, right? Whenever working with a percentage, this number is always going to be 100. I also know the 32 goes right here. Now, this is the amount, not the whole. It says 32% of what number is 64? That is the amount, not the whole. And X is the whole part. Because I already know the amount, I need to find the whole. Now, is over of, is 64, and of what number? The of part is the unknown. That's the of what number, right? The is part is known. So if you like is over of, that can help you remember which goes where as well. Now, once again, we need to cross multiply. X and 32 make 32X equals, let's see, 6,400, right? And then I got to divide by 32. Divide by 32 and I get X equals 200. And then I'm going to read. 32% of 200 is 64. That makes sense, right? I should always reread to make sure my answer makes sense. Sometimes if you make a mistake, rereading the question can help you identify those mistakes. Now our last example. 90 is what percent of 360? Well, I'm working with percentages, so I'll put 100 here. And now I'm asking for the percentage. What percent? I don't know the percent this time. I'm going to use the letter P for percent. We've been using X a lot today. So we'll put a line here. Now, 90 is. 90 is the is part, right? And 360 is the of portion. You can also think about it. 90 is the amount out of the whole 360, right? Make sure you know which values go where because that's part of the question. Now, we'll cross multiply. 90 times 100 is 9,000. 360 times P is 360P. I'll divide by 360. All right, divide by 360. And let's see, 9,000 divided by 360. 9,000 divided by 360 is 25 equals P. Now I need to be careful, I need to put the percent sign on this answer, because the answer is a percent. So I make sure I put the percent sign on my answer for this one. Notice I didn't put the values here, because they're not percentages. The percentage was the 15 or the 32, right, in these questions. I already knew the percent. Here I'm finding the percent, so I make sure I put a percent sign after my answer. And I get my answer of 25%. Notice we had an example of each, where the amount, the whole, and the percent were each unknown. Or if you prefer, where the is, the of, and the percent were each unknown. So you'll see these in all different flavors. The 100 will always be known. This 100 will always be known. That's what makes it a percentage problem. It's always out of 100. So that number will never change, right? It's always going to be 100. The other three, though, can change. So just be wary of that. Now, Let's do another example of a percent problem, but this time a word problem. And then we'll talk about our procedure for solving these proportion problems like I said we would. So, first, a newspaper ad offered a set of tires at a sale price of $258. So they're on sale for $258. The regular price, the regular price was $300. 
And then it says, what percent, ah, I'm working with percentages. I already know I'm working with percentages. Of the regular price was the savings. Now, I have the sale price. Or I have the regular price, which is 300 And if I subtract the sale price, that will be equal to the savings, correct? Notice I need to find the savings. That's the first thing I wanted to find because I knew I could find the savings. I went for that first. I'm not going to worry about anything except finding what the savings is. Well, how much money did I save? What is 300 minus 250? How much money am I actually saving? Well, if we take our calculator, 300 minus 258, we're going to get 42. So $42 was the savings. I saved $42. Now, I'm looking for the percent. So when I set this problem up, I'm looking for the percent, and I know this is going to be 100, right? I already know I'm looking for a percent. Now, maybe I want to use is over of. Of. the What percent of the regular price was the savings? Was is the past tense of is, right? Was is the past tense of is. So the is part is the savings. Be careful with the tense. Make sure you recognize when past tense or present tense is being used. Well, if the is part is the savings, that means it goes on top, right? And if the of part was the regular price, which was $300, it goes on bottom. You can also think of the savings as part of the whole, right? The savings is the part. It's the amount I'm concerned about. And the whole part was the regular price. You can think about it either way. Now, we're ready to cross multiply, which will give us 4,200. 42 times 100 equals 300p. Then I can divide by 300. Divide by 300. And I'll get p equals... Let's see, 4,200, oops, divided by 300, gives me 14. So a 14% savings, right? 14% savings. All right? I found what percent of the regular price was the savings. It was a 14% savings, right? So notice I had to find the savings first. And I did that first, right? I needed to know the savings. I knew the sale price and the regular price. Be careful with questions like this. Make sure you know which values you're working with. I wanted to talk about the savings, so I needed to find the savings, how much I saved. Now, let's talk about the procedure for solving these proportion problems. Let's talk about the procedure. Well, step one is recognize that the problem involves ratios and proportions. The first thing you need to do to solve a proportion problem is understand that it is a proportion problem. We've seen many types of word problems so far. We need to recognize that it is a proportion problem first, right? When I looked at this Leanne gas pumping example, I recognized there was a ratio of gallons of gas to dollars spent. So I'm going to recognize that the problem involves ratios and proportions. Second, the second step after I do that is set up the known ratio. You will know one of the ratios. In our gas pumping example, I set up the known ratio. The gas pumping example was 1550 to 5 gallons. I knew that those two values were related. They were in ratio with one another, right? I had 5 gallons and 1550 in cash. I set that ratio up. I set up the known ratio. Step 3 is set up the unknown ratio respecting the placement of units. The placement of the units. 
And this is where, in this example, I made sure dollars matched with dollars and gallons matched with gallons. You have to match the units. If the top is dollars, the bottom better be gallons. If the top is feet, the other top must be feet, right? You got to match the units. You got to match the units. So respecting the placement of the units. And then step four is use cross multiplication multiplication to solve the proportion use cross multiplication to solve the proportion so that's the procedure for solving proportion problems first is understanding this proportion Second is setting up your known ratio. Third is setting up your unknown ratio. Be careful with the units. And fourth is we cross multiply to solve it. Right? That's exactly what we did in this gas pumping example. We set up the known. We set up the unknown. We cross multiplied. And then we solved. Right? And that is always the procedure for these proportion problems. And that brings us to the end of section 2.6. Thank you for stopping by, and I will see you next time.